Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks for joining me for nine on the positive side. We have some really great stories for you today that we hope will make you smile or inspire you. It's a bond like no other people and their pets. A man in Greensboro experiencing homelessness understands that firsthand. Donald Dickerson needs to have a partial knee replacement. Doctors won't operate until he has a place to live. The problem he's run into trying to find a place to take in both him and his dog. Aaliyah Sims has more about his journey. And every day he looks at me. I know I am loved and I named him dude because that's my dude. The saying goes, a dog is a man's best friend. It couldn't be more true for Donald Dickerson. We have a, a close, close connection. That connection has strengthened over the past months. He's been hanging in there with me. Donald and Dude are homeless and spend their days and nights in the woods at a campsite. I could have already had a place to live, but they wanted me to foster my dog. I'm not doing that. And to make matters worse, he has a swollen knee. And that's painful. He needs a partial knee replacement. And while everything was lined up months ago, doctors said they couldn't operate yet. When the doctors found out I was homeless, they said, we have to postpone it until you find a place to live because we need to have somebody come out and take care of you. He has not been able to secure a place that will take in both hey. him and do. Hey, come on, bud. I, I cannot give him up. If I have to be homeless, and go without my surgery and continue to go through the pain, I will do that because I will not leave him. It takes that special individual because they care more about someone else than they care about themselves. It's that sacrifice that caught Lane Miller's attention as she drove along Wendover Avenue to work each day. Seeing this gentleman probably for the last, almost for the last year, I can see a smile through the mask, okay? And that's probably what did it for me. Really want to appreciate you just seeing me as a human being and not just a homeless person. Over the months, Lane and Donald began a friendship, and that's when Lane wanted to step in to help out by reaching out to several organizations and agencies. I hit a lot of people. And while the duo waits around for options, they know they have each other. And if it wasn't for him, honestly, I would have given up. If I have to continue to be homeless and I get my surgery, I'll do that because I'm not giving him up. Aaliyah Sims, Fox 8 News. What a special bond. More than 240 third grade students in the Carteret County school system are riding in style. Check this out. That's because they were surprised with new bikes during a special presentation. The students wrote essays on what they want to be when they're older and their plans to achieve those dreams. Counselor Bridget Davis at Smyrna Elementary School says she's hoping these kids are inspired to dream big and continue to work hard. I mean, I saw some kids crying that they want a bike. Um, just the excitement of winning. And it was a very inspirational assembly to focus on um, how important it is to work hard and make good grades even now. That the president of Bikes for Kids Foundation says the foundation will gift 19,000 bikes to North Carolina students alone. Let's switch gears now. There's lots of creativity happening at a school in Greenville and is allowing students to create and think outside the box. For three students, it inspired an invention, solving a puzzle you might even be familiar with. I just, I don't know, have an obsession with getting, as, just going as fast as possible. A passion for solving Rubik's Cubes. Here we go. Put to the test in this unique lab at the Oakwood School in Greenville. This is a student-based, project-led, where students decide what they do lab. It goes with Oakwood's mission. We try to build leaders for tomorrow. So in that choice, we let them choose early. Hey, this is what my passion is. I want to pursue this passion. For these three, having that choice got their gears turning. You just have a lot of freedom to do like whatever you want, which is really nice. It's not something a lot of classes can give you. Bringing their passion for solving Rubik's Cubes from outside the classroom in. Took a look on the internet and hey, what do you know? There's like people have done it before. They call it the Rubik's Cube Solver. 
It scans all the colors for each six sides. Once it does that, it will use the bottom platform and to turn the Rubik's Cube. It will just do that until it solves the Rubik's Cube. It's made almost all out of Legos. It makes all the calculations, sorry, this is how many moves I'm going to need. This is how I'm going to use those moves. They say it takes about 80 to 90 seconds to solve. Mm -hmm. Like any invention, this one took some twists and turns to get right. We had failed at a couple things before, like um, uh, when we built it, like some pieces we slightly turned wrong and it messed everything up. Like the class is designed to do. I just take a step back and let them create and it's an amazing result. They found a way so the last move. to solve the puzzle. It's very filling when it finally worked. And there were actually... An incredible work it is. The Rubik's Cube solver will be kept in the lab. The boys are now on to another project, learning iMovie and drone technology. Now, this story out of Nashville, Tennessee is pretty cool. During halftime at a Belmont University's men's basketball game, a freshman won big. But Kweshi Mensa hit a half-court shot, but this just wasn't to show off his skills. It's one that actually won him free tuition for a semester. Mensa, who played basketball in high school, said in the moment he thought about that saying by the great Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And when the ball left his hand, he knew he was not going to miss. I used to practice like the shot and I was like roll the ball and step into it. So um, I rolled the ball and it kind of spun, um, spun back to me and um, I just took it. In my head, I wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, you're going to miss a shot. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about none of that. I was just, you know, just going in the moment, just your time and, you know, take opportunity, you know, so. It's a moment like I would just never forget. Wow, after winning the basket, after putting the basket in the winning bat, well, you get what I mean. Mensa called his parents. I think it's pretty safe to say they were thrilled about his free tuition for a semester. Do you know someone who's making their community better? We're looking for stories that are uplifting and will make someone smile. You can send your ideas to the email you see right there on your screen. You can also reach out to me directly on Facebook or on Twitter. And my son said, well, why don't we turn New London into Who London? For all you Dr. Seuss fans, this scene might look a little familiar ahead on Nine on the Positive Side, how one town is paying tribute to a Dr. Seuss classic. And girls on the run. More on this organization that's working hard to empower women. Welcome back. One organization is raising money for scholarships in memory of a North Carolina National Guard member. Nine on your side's Caitlin Richards tells us how the event is helping people pursue higher education in ENC. Here at Greenville Town Common, the community came together to run as a way to remember a local fallen hero's service and to continue his legacy of giving back. Hundreds of people attended the Reindeer Dash for Cash Sunday. It's a fundraising event benefiting the Captain Christopher Cash Memorial Foundation of North Carolina. He was amazing. Um, he was the type of person that just brought life and love to the room when he walked in. He loved running, he loved education, and he loved helping people. And that's exactly what this run is all about. On June 24, 2004, Christopher S. Cash made the ultimate sacrifice while serving his country in Iraq while serving in the North Carolina Army National Guard. Participants ran a 10-mile course along the Greenway and through ECU's campus. It means a lot to me. It's actually, uh, since I'm part of the National Guard as well, um, this, this is very important to us and it's very important for me to do it uh, each year that I can. All money raised will go to support college scholarships for students in Captain Cash's memory. Cash's foundation offers ECU students financial assistance to pursue higher education through ECU and the National Guard Educational Foundation. Every year um, I get to meet and meet new people that learned of Chris and see old friends of Chris and it's just it's a wonderful reunion of um, remembering life and love of a wonderful man. Runners say they plan to participate in this event every year because of what it means to Captain Christopher Cash's family. In Greenville, Caitlin Richards, 9, on your side. 
If you've been out and about, you've probably seen homes decked out for the holidays. If you're a Jacksonville resident, well, you might want to listen to this. You can submit your decorations for the Christmas Holiday Home Decorating Contest. The Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee has been doing this for five years now. From now until December 15th, residents can submit pictures of their festive displays to win an award and recognition during a city council meeting. The more the merrier. Uh, we'd like a, a wide range of, of residential customers to you know submit their recommendations for the for the contest, and I think it's it's becoming more and more popular. With the official rules are on the Jacksonville government website. We have a link to that on our website, WNCT.com. The holiday season is full of parades, lights, shopping, and so much more. We have found a way to give you a break from all of the hustle and bustle every day through New Year's Eve. Nine on your side will have a new story to help you prep for the holidays. Just head over to our website, WNCT.com, and click on the On Your Side tab to find our 31 best days of Christmas. Now in Ohio, the town of New London has a new name these days. For the month of December, you can call it Who London, and well, here's why. They've turned the four blocks of town into a Whoville of sorts, complete with Who's and visits from the Grinch himself. The town had to cancel their Christmas parade and fun last year because of this pandemic. Well, this year, they say it's about getting together again and bringing in some new people to see what their town has to offer. And we thought we need to do we need to do something that brings joy to our village, whether we have that event or not. That's just there all month long. And my son said, "Well, why don't we turn New London into Who London?" And I said, "That's a great idea." It is a great idea. Who London will hold several activities for families throughout this month at various businesses and places around town. Check this 21 year tradition out in Maine. Skiers there are hitting the slopes wearing Santa's signature red suit. Now, if you couldn't count them all up, there's 232 skiers and snowboarders to be exact. This event raising more than $4,000 for the River Fund charity. And there's the Grinch himself. It's a charity organization that introduces young people to the benefits of outdoor recreation. One couple is holding the German world record with a total of 444 trees decorated head to toe with baubles, tinsel and lights. No two trees are the same with a huge variety of festive colors and themes. More than 10,000 Christmas balls and 300 strings of fairy lights are used. It looks incredible. The couple decorates each tree by hand months before Christmas in order to have it up when December rolls around. It may not be a sleigh full of toys, but it's close. An airplane loaded with Christmas trees and other special items addressed to our service women and men stationed overseas got a big send off at JFK in New York. Vanessa Murdoch tells us more about Trees for Troops. Fresh cut Christmas trees wrapped, stacked and ready for delivery. Lights and decorations carefully packed to trim the trees get loaded next at Dee's Nursery in Oceanside. The final destination of all these symbols of the season, troops stationed overseas in Kuwait and Bahrain. They provide our freedom. Joe DiDominica tells us Operation Holiday Cheer started in 2004. Our mom came into the store back uh, 18 years ago and asked my dad if we could send a treat to her son who had just gotten deployed. With the help of DHL, they made it happen then, and the partnership still goes strong today. When we start to get the emails back and the pictures of them with their trees, it's something that you'll carry for a lifetime, um, and you just want to keep on doing it and doing it. Colonel Thomas Sullivan received a tree in 2006 when stationed in Iraq. Things are pretty austere. We don't expect much to get these these trees and these care packages. It was pretty amazing that we were on the minds of so many people within this community. Community, exactly the secret ingredient to success here. Merry Christmas. A brigade of Gold Star families, Port Authority police officers, veterans, the Chaminade High School ice hockey team, and more help move trees from truck to pod at JFK. What this event really shows is that one simple conversation, one little act of kindness can turn into 18 years of amazingness. Holiday happiness shipped to our servicemen and women, but perhaps the most sentimental of items getting sent 
letters from little ones. Dear soldier, thank you for your bravery. I think you're selfless because instead of spending the holidays with your family, you chose to protect our country and all of our wishes for a happy and healthy holiday season. May these trees and trimmings make your Christmas away from home a little more merry and bright. From JFK, Vanessa Murdoch, CBS 2 News. To stay warm and they need to know that somebody cares about them too, that they need some hope. Keeping those in need warm during the winter months. Next on 9 on the Positive Side, the effort to make sure those experiencing homelessness have the things they need. It's very moving too to see these little girls come across the finish line um, not knowing that their bodies were capable of doing this and just that feeling of completion of reaching their goal. It's very moving. More than 100 people supporting the Girls on the Run 5K in Virginia. The Girls on the Run organization serving several areas in that state. The after school program helps third, fourth and fifth graders build friendships and life skills. During the eight week program, the girls training to run across the finish line. A Massachusetts church donated backpacks full of supplies to two police departments. Katrina Kincaid spoke to them about how the backpacks will help people facing homelessness. Okay. It may not be a sleigh, but this U-Haul is full of gifts for two local police departments this holiday season for them to give to others. We hope and pray that this is one of the ways that they can help connect with the community a little better and build some more community support. This morning, Life Point Church dropped off backpacks for the Holyoke and Chicopee Police Department. The backpacks have winter supplies and toiletries for those experiencing homelessness. I thought it'd be like a great idea to just give back and to help those in need and just let them know like someone is thinking about them and is there to help them. They need some comfort and to stay warm and they need to know that somebody cares about them too, that they need some hope. Each police department is getting 20 bags filled with five backpacks, each totaling to 100 backpacks per police department. We'll get them out there and I just hope they're used. Um, I've looked through the bags. There's a lot of items that can definitely make this uh, colder weather a little bit more comfortable for the people out there. The police department says they'll be distributed by their community, mental health and addiction officers. We'll probably keep a couple at the station because we do uh, during the colder weather. Uh, some homeless people will come into our station to stay warm, so that'll give us an opportunity to hand them out also. The church raised over $12,000 to put together the backpacks. Working for you in Holyoke, Katrina Kincaid, 22 News. And here's what's next on 9 on the positive side. We're taking you under the sea. Sure, Santa is busy at the North Pole, but he's making time to check things off his bucket list. An aquarium in Budapest is working to spread Christmas cheer. Dra divers are dressing up as Santa Claus to feed the sharks and fish. The festive divers went into aquarium tanks in protective cages to feed the animals. There's also a small Christmas tree at the bottom of the tank decorated with shells. That's all the time we have for you today. But before we go, we want to show you this otter munching on a snack. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone.